Now I'm going to do something that's going to feel a little bit like a non sequitur. Okay. What if I wanted to figure out the probability of drawing a person at random with an IQ with an IQ that is less than say 110? Let's really wrap our brain around what this means. Remember, IQs are normally distributed variable with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. All right. So really what I'm looking for here is it's got its own distribution. I know that the mean in the middle of this guy is 100. And if I go out, this is horribly drawn, so bear with me. But let's say that that right there is, that's 100, then that's 115, because we're talking about one standard deviation away. So 110 is going to live about here. What we're really looking for, because this is a normally distributed variable, is we are looking for all of the area down here. Everything. Because the area, remember, of any, I know that the area underneath any curve, under, excuse me, any normal curve, the area is equal to 1. Under the whole thing, I probably should have drawn that like that. Okay? Now, <clears throat> That is exactly the probability that we select a person at random with an IQ less than, or believe it or not, less than or equal to 110. Using this curve, it is impossible, impossible for us to figure out the probability of finding a person with an IQ exactly equal to 110 because I have to build out area. And any single value, let me change colors right here to illustrate this, any single value has no area, it's got no width. So there's no way to measure its area, all right? So let's go back to the standard normal deviation and let's talk, or standard normal distribution, and let's talk about how to find these areas. I'm jumping from an IQ normal distribution to the standard normal distribution, which is 0, 1, all right? Now, there are lots of ways to do this. The easiest way to do it is going to be to use your calculator, but even with your calculator, it can get a little bit tricky, all right? Because it's difficult to program a calculator to, to get exactly what you want. Now, let's go, let's keep this simple because we're going to need a little notation before we get crazy. All right, you ready? What we're going to do is, let's say, I'm going to call this value right here z. It's going to be a lowercase z. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a chart to figure out the probability that z is going to be less than some big z, some number. This guy right here, don't worry about this. This is going to be just a number. And I'm going to use a table to do so. Now, again, I don't want you to get too wrapped up in, in the, the method by which we do this. You need to know how to do it, but what I really want you to do is start thinking in terms of how can I use this procedure that we're going to use to start applying it to things like finding the probability that somebody has an IQ that's less than 110, okay? We're going to refer to this z-score from now on to be the data value on the standard normal distribution. So this is the data value on the standard normal. Standard normal. All right, you also hear, refer, hear this referred to as curve. So in this case, this guy right here, what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the road, we're going to turn this Z value, or excuse me, this 110 IQ into a Z value. Now again, I'll explain how to do that down the road. Okay? so. Before we get too crazy, let's go back and let's look at, at a table. I'm going to show you how to do a, a table or how to deal with a table here. And I just dragged this thing off of the internet. So check this out. Okay, look at this. So here's a normally distributed variable. All right. It's a standard normal curve. It says that right here. All right. There's a Z value. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this, this table, So, but I want, to, I want to talk to you a little bit how this works first. It's telling us that the probability is this area or this region to the left of the Z value. By the way, this is the exact same type of chart that you have in your text. So if I have a Z value that is negative 2.9. Now, what does that mean? Let's go back 
to my bamboo paper. Make this sucker big for a sec. All right, we're going to use that chart at negative 2.9, but we're going to hold off for a sec. Let's say, click over here to a new page. I can't believe I've done 60 pages worth of work. Remember, our z value is the data value on the horizontal axis. So if this is 0, what negative 2.9 means, z equals negative 2.9 really implies that I am 2.9 standard deviations and that's really the key to the left to the left of 0 or of the mean all right so if I stumble over that here's 0 I know that negative 1 is my first standard deviation so negative 2, negative 2.9, what I'm looking for is the area to the left of that. So if I go back here to the internet and I go negative 2.90, and remember how this chart works, it gives me the area to the left of the z value. Z value is just number of standard deviations away. The probability of laying to the left of negative 2.9 standard deviations <clears throat> is less than 1%. In fact, it's 19 out of 10,000. Okay, now I know I'm going to repeat myself a lot on this, so just bear with. This really means is we have a probability of 0 0.0019 on the standard normal curve of getting a value below negative 2.9 standard deviations away from the mean on the left-hand side. Well, let's do one that's a little more a little more reasonable. So let's go. I don't know. How about just negative negative 1.5. So if I'm trying to look, let's change colors. If I go z equals negative 1.5, well now negative 1, negative 1.5 is going to live right here. I'm looking for that area. All right. Now I'm going to start rewriting this. All right. I'm going to start rewriting this as the probability that z is less than negative 1.5 because that's really what it is. I'm talking about less than negative 1.5. I stumble back over here. I'm going to try and find negative 1.5. Oh, there's negative 1.50. Negative 1.50 is right there. 0 0.0668. Think about it this way, ladies and gentlemen. 6.68% of all of the data in a normal curve lives below negative z equals negative 1.5 or the probability of grabbing a data value that is more than negative 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean on the left is 6.68 percent or 0 0.0668 all right how about this what if I'm looking for this guy? Let me change my colored pencils again. Let's go back here. What if I'm looking for the probability that z is greater than, say, negative uh, 1.29? Now, this is going to take some thinking. But, okay, negative 1.29. You know what? I'm going to get bigger here, and I'm going to make a new curve. All right, so here we go. Now we're starting to look like that barracuda, or that anaconda that I said. So... I'm looking for the probability that z is greater than negative 1.29. So one standard deviation, we'll just call this just for giggles, z equals negative 1.29. But this time, I'm looking for the area to the right of that z-score. All right? I'm looking for all of that area. But Ripley, you dare say, our graph doesn't work that way. It only gives me values to the left. Well, let's see, negative 1.29. How do I do negative 1.29? Well, look at how my chart works. It gives me, net, here's negative 1.2, and if I stumble, whoops, if I stumble all the way over here, this value corresponds to negative 1.20, negative 1.21, negative 1.22, negative 1.23, exec, get out of there, negative 1.23, et cetera. This value right here corresponds to the area to the left of z equals negative one, yeah, 1.29. So let's go back here and see if we can play with what that really means. I know that if this area, because my chart told me so, if this is 0 0.0985, 
the probability of being below negative 1.29. Well, guess what the probability is of being above negative 1.29? It's one logical step that we have to make to figure it out. Well, I know that the area under the entire curve, because it's a probability distribution, the area under this thing is 1, so I simply go 1 minus 0 0.0985. Uh, That's that area, which is, what is that, 0.9015, is that right? And that's my answer, 0 0.9015. Isn't that cool? So it really doesn't matter how the chart looks. I'll show you another chart here in just a sec. But let's let's have fun with another one. I get in the habit, and I try to instill this in all my students, of drawing a curve every time I do it. I mean, look at my curves. They're horrific. Don't, don't try not to have too much of an inward witness. What if I want the probability of Z being uh, greater than positive 1? Let's get away from 1. Let's go positive 0.38. Okay? 0.38. All right, so I'm going to draw myself just a little curve this time because you guys are probably getting tired of seeing that. Remember, it's on the standard normal, so zero lives there. 0.38 is going to be pretty close to the mean, isn't it? It's not very many standard deviations away. It's going to be right there. Let's call it that right there. So that Z equals 0.38, and I'm looking for the area above it. Okay. Well, that doesn't seem too scary, except that my chart doesn't work that way. Oh, wait, and this chart doesn't even have positives on it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, well, looky here. That's kind of cool. Look at that. Now I've got z-scores that are above zero, which is nice. So between both pages, I've got everything I need. So all we got to do is go to z equals point, what did I say, point three eight, didn't I? Let me double check so I don't do anything silly. Er, <laughs> yeah, 0.38. So 0.3. I stumble over here to 0.08. So together they make 0 0.38. I think that's it right there, isn't it? So 0.38. I go back to my paper right here. And I know, again, let me change colors. I know that the area from 0.38 down, in other words, below, 0.38, all of that area, this guy right here, according to that, is 0.648. So the area above, which is what I'm looking for, is 1 minus 0.648, which is what? 0 0.352. 3.52. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my answer, which means the probability of finding something which is greater than 0.38 standard deviations away from the mean is 0.352. Now, your bunny ears are probably perking up. Ripley, it's weird when teachers talk about themselves in the third person, isn't it? Ripley says that any normal curve can be distilled down to the standard normal curve. All I need is a bridge. So if I think about, well, IQs, maybe you've got a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, but I can suck that distribution down into the standard normal curve, then all I need is this one curve to answer any and all questions that I have about any normal curve. I must say that one more time. If I have a bridge that can get me from any normal curve to the standard normal curve, this right here is the Rosetta Stone for all normal curves. It will get me anything that I want that I'm, when I'm talking about normal curves. That's pretty powerful. I hope you see it for how powerful it is. If you don't now, you will shortly.